this computer. That may now prompt you, you may have to approve that you do agree for it to be recorded so that we can move forward. Awesome. Okay. okay, perfect. Well, if anybody else joins, we'll just be sure to, to let them in. So thank you so much, everyone, for taking the time to show up today. I am excited to discuss goal setting and how to set and stick to your goals. I do first, if everyone's comfortable, I would love to do just a quick intro of those that are here. I usually just like to do a quick name, maybe how long we've been working together or maybe your goal you've accomplished or anything that you're feeling really good about or that you would like to share. So of course, you all know who I am. I'm also wearing this fun sweater that my sister made me. My sister-in-law says Jen the RHN. So she gave it to me for my birthday, which I thought was kind of cute that I would wear today. Um, so yeah, I'll go in order. By all means, if you're not able to, um, to speak, if you're just listening, if you don't tune in for a minute or two, so I'll just go on to the next person. So I'm going in order the way I can see you on my screen. I don't know if your gallery view is different. So Kieran, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name's Kieran. I have worked with Jen since July 30th of last year, and I have reached my first goal. I have two more goals to go. Yes, amazing. Yeah, very significant goal, substantial lifestyle changes that have happened. I'm so proud of you. Thank you for joining. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if you're available to chat. Vanessa? All right, no worries. I think she- I'm here, sorry. Oh, no, no worries. Like I said, I don't want anyone- yeah, to for a second. Um, yeah. I've been with uh, Jen since, oh, it's been four weeks now, I think. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm feeling great. Um, really close to my goal weight-wise and um, uh, ultimately just uh, making positive lifestyle changes that have really had a, a positive impact on my overall daily routine. So yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Those issues all better so yeah uh thank you so much for showing up tonight i appreciate it and i'm so glad um vanessa actually just wrote this really amazing review that i'll have to to share with everybody just about her progress so far and just all the extra benefits of accomplishing where she was you know wanted to with her goal but just extra productivity at work more energy sleeping better feeling better all of those benefits that i know the rest of you are aware of as well so thank you um mom hi mom <laughs> Hi, I'm Shelly. <laughs> um, I started with Jen, well, really, really long time ago, but with this program, uh, <laughs> yeah, when January, mid-January, it was a year, I think, yeah, Joanne and I started on the same day, January 16th, yeah. 2021, yeah. Yes. yes. So, yeah, I got the majority of my weight off, and then I'm just kind of kicking around, but I was talking to Jen recently that I want to get more serious. I have the big 6-0 coming up in April. So I would like to get, yeah, I would like to get the, just the last few pounds off and yeah. stick to it. But I've stuck to the fundamental main, uh, you know, lost for words, whatever, the main sort of rules of the program with the, the, only eating three meals a day, drinking the water, all that sort of thing. So yeah, I usually at this time of always, I'm been a yo-yo dieter, always gain. By now, I've, I would have gained it all back every other time. So this is uh, the big change and just keep pushing along. Yeah, amazing. Thank you. And I know, I think I said this before, but as some, as your daughter, I've watched you do kind of various different plans or things with always having that yo-yo effect. So it's been just extra rewarding to find something that has this stability and, and the ability that you can actually sustain it long-term. It can be integrated into your daily life. And it's not always about, you know, that con you don't always have to constantly be working towards whatever your weight goal is, right? If you have a weight loss goal, and I have this conversation a lot of times with clients, there's so much to be said for stability and maintaining. And that in itself is such an accomplishment. And it's more important to build the, those daily habits and build a lifestyle that you can sustain long-term than rush towards any type of goal, right? So that in itself um, 
is a big accomplishment. And really, that's what makes everything last long term. So, okay, Joanne, speaking of big accomplishments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been at this for a year now. I'm one of the old folks from way back. <laughs> Uh, um 92 pounds yeah is that what it is Something like that. literally phenomenal i know um still want to keep going though yeah no that's amazing and i love that you say like that you guys are saying from way back because that just means that i've actually been doing this for like it's crazy to me over a year yeah like the last year flew by and it was just such it's been such a rewarding year and it literally has changed like working with you and you know watching your transformations has literally transformed me so thank you so much it has literally shifted the direction of where I'm going with my future as well so also very exciting well, um, thank you yeah yes oh good okay Mallory hi hey yeah, so I'm Mallory. I started with Jen uh, September 27th last year um, and I've lost like 50, almost 54 pounds. So in four and a half months. Um, yeah, I tried everything as well. Like I was, I did Noom, I did Weight Watchers and I just, I had the same sort of effect. Um, I had, I have two small kids, but like not that small. So I can't really use that as an excuse. Um, so no, yeah, it's so great. I, it's just so easy to follow. It's so easy to allow yourself that balance. Um, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything and yeah, it's great. I'm so glad your progress has been phenomenal. Like it's just, your body has responded so well. And it just goes to show that when you really follow the that custom plan, those original foods prescribed to you, because I know you really stick to a lot of those, like the results are outstanding. So thank you and thank you for coming. Yeah, no, thanks. Um, Melissa, I'm not sure if you're available to chat. <laughs> Here's my beautiful granddaughter. Hi, 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 honey. Hi. Hi. Um, all right, I'm not sure if Melissa is available. So maybe we'll just, yeah. oh, you, hi. Hey. Hi. Hey. Good. My name's Melissa. I've been doing this, I think. I don't. Yeah. No. I don't know if I can't hear you. Can you guys hear her? It's like cutting in and out. No. Sorry, Melissa. It seems to be cutting in and out. It's. It, I could hear you for a second, and then it went away. Congrats on your new house. If you can hear us, if you can hear me, <laughs> Melissa just moved. Maybe you can type in the chat too, if if maybe the, there's technical issues. Okay. Um, well, thank you so much for coming. Congrats on the house. And uh, I've actually been working with Melissa for, oh goodness, it's gotta be close to a year now too. So, um, and she's, put in so much work to sustain and, and find a balance that works for her. So it's been great. Rachel, are you there? Hi, Jen. Hi guys. Um, I have been working with Jen. I'm almost through my probation period. It's been almost three months. <laughs> um, it's been, it's been, there's definitely been some challenges, but I think I've found some solace in trying at least one new recipe a week, which you probably all see Instagram tagged. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm halfway to my, I wanted to lose around 70 pounds when I started with Jen. I had originally lost, I had kept off 20 before, like everybody else who tried everything under the sun. Um, thought, what else do I have to lose? I want to get fit for I'm, I'm on a journey that I'm calling 40. So. I love it. Honestly, you have been doing amazing. Your progress is amazing. You just, like, like you said, when you had can't come to me, you had already sustained some weight loss. And then this, your body just responded so well with your custom plan. And you are so creative with recipes. This girl sends me food that I'm like, oh my gosh, I want that right now. <laughs> She's so creative in the kitchen and definitely never gives up. 
and is just adamant and you have been doing an incredible job. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Um, Joanne, I know you actually already messaged me that you can listen, but um, you might not be able to tune in. Thank you for coming. Um, Karen, are you able to, uh, to tune in? No worries. I'm not sure if Karen can tune in either. I think she actually did message that she might not be able to. All right. And then last year I have Jamie. Are you there? Um, yep. Um, so I think I'm five or six weeks in. Um, I started January 8th. Um, it has been fantastic like truly fantastic. When Jen said it would take 10 days to see the results, I felt amazing after four. Like it is truly remarkable and I'm never hungry. It has just been a great experience for me. Amazing. Yeah, you've been doing incredible, really integrating it into your life, went away for the weekend and just like mm -hmm. accordingly for it, right? Like it's when something is important enough to you, you make those changes, right? And you make, you know, make those shifts and you adapt and you, you, you prep and you plan and, and you go and enjoy yourself and enjoy life. And I don't step on the scale until Friday. I learned that the hard way. So it's been, uh, it really changes how you think about this program. If you're not checking the scale all the time for me anyways. Absolutely. And that is a conversation I usually have with almost everybody is that is completely detached from the scale in between Friday is only once a week to kind of monitor your progress. But if your focus is this, those changing numbers on the scale, then you're misdirected on what's most important. Because the most important focus is focusing on building sustainable habits, focusing on your nutrition, focusing on your health, your wellness, your plan, your energy, your sleep, your stress, everything that encompasses our day-to-day -day lives. And when those become your priority and those become most important, then those results will come on Fridays, right? The scale can mentally interfere, right? Because the body can respond, the body doesn't respond as quickly as the mind. So you could have a really great day and then you go to check the scale in the morning and you're up and then you're frustrated and you don't understand why, because the body doesn't move that quickly. So really detaching in between, just focusing on what's most important, checking in once a week just to monitor your progress is perfect. And it's, that's plenty and, and definitely no more than that. Anyways, yes, Jamie, thank you so much for coming. Awesome. Okay. Um, and yes, I see Melissa did type in the chat. So no worries. She's here, which is great. So uh, I wanted to dive a little bit into goal setting. So I know it's a tad cliche to pair New Year's resolutions with goal setting, but this is something that of course you can do anytime. Um, but I do find in, in, in a new year, a lot of people do kind of reflect and have those moments of reflecting on the year that they just had and focusing and planning for the year ahead. So I thought it would be a good time. Um, and I specifically wanted to do it now because for people who goal set for a new year, 33% of those people will abandon their goals after six weeks. So we're at the six week mark uh, into the new year. So I wanted to make sure that we, we, uh, we address that and nobody here is going to fall into that category. So first thing I wanted to do is I'm gonna go through a couple of kind of startling facts with you. And then I've actually broken down goal setting into a top 10. So kind of like the last meeting we had where I did the top 10 tips for success for over the holidays. I've broken down this down into the top 10 for goal setting. Um, all right, so I will dive in. Any, does anyone have any questions before we get started? Everyone's good? We're good, awesome. All right, so a few staggering facts. 25% of people will abandon their goals within one week. 33% within six weeks, we've already went over that, and 60% within six months. The average person will set the same New Year's resolution or goal 10 different times, the exact same one. Interestingly enough, for those who experience severe health conditions, so for example, those who have a heart attack, only 14% of people will actually make permanent health changes after that. So it's, it's almost terrifying that when you have that scary of a health scare, the amount of people that still really struggle to make those changes. Um, weight loss programs or plans, overall, if you were to average it out, have a five to 10% success rate. That puts you at close to, closer to a 90% chance of failing. Mm -hmm. That's how you average it out. Um, 
this is certainly not meant to be deflating, but it's meant to understand that there's so much more to encompass than a weight loss plan or program, right? And this is what we talked about, that yo-yo effect where people try these plans um, and and the this, this success doesn't stay. So definitely not meant to be deflating, but meant to open our eyes that if we're, you know, we're going to be successful, it actually has to be detached from the goals and success is in your systems. So it is lovely to set these goals for ourselves and to have these goals that we want to accomplish. But accomplishing a goal is the effort put within the system. Just like we just talked about that week, checking in and weighing in on Fridays. You have to have a system that you pay way more attention and focus more of your focus more on all week to accomplish that goal on Friday, right? So I'm actually going to put a little bit more attention on the systems because that's where you're going to be successful. Interestingly enough, if we spend too much of our time focusing on the goal, so there's actually someone shared with me a TED talk about this. If we spend so much time focusing on the goal and we start sharing our goal, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to lose 20 pounds. I'm going to get a promotion at work. I'm going to run a marathon. I'm going to do all of these things. I have these goals. This is going to happen. Your body actually starts to psychologically um, sense the accomplishment already. So you're, 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 you're feeling that accomplished because you, you have these goals in mind, but you haven't put, put or redirected your focus on the system. So it's actually detaching a little bit, keeping the goal in mind and putting more of the focus on the system. Um, I actually, and in the, within the system actually comes with, with building habits, right? And I actually just wanted to point out this book that I got. So I don't know if any of you saw me post it. So this book is called Atomic Habits. Um, I highly recommend it. Unfortunately, I haven't finished reading it yet. So from what I've read so far, it's been really helpful. I think it's a really great book. Um, funny enough, I actually lost my reading glasses and I can't, I'm really struggling to read. I can't read without my glasses. I've been going crazy the last couple of days, um, hoping to get more of this book in, but that's definitely my problem. I'll have to figure out my reading glasses. Anyways, Atomic Habits, literally you can just order it on Amazon or get it on chapters. I think for everybody, it would be a really helpful book. And then maybe one of the, one of the calls we could do is just everybody just kind of like collaborating on the book and their thoughts. And we can have, have a little bit of a book club, one of our, one of these Zoom meetings. Okay. So I'm going to break down my uh, top 10 ways to focus a little bit more on your system to set, stick to, and therefore accomplish your desired goal. So many of you may have heard of SMART goals. I don't know for those of you who I can see if you've heard of SMART goals before or setting a SMART goal. So I'm actually gonna take it one step further and I'm gonna go through SMART-er goals. I will send you all a little worksheet uh, either later today or tomorrow that you can start mapping out your SMART goals. So a SMART goal is specific, measurable, realistic, actionable, time-bound. A smarter goal, the ER, is exciting and relevant. So let's go through this. I'm going to make it very simple because a lot of a lot of us have the same thing in common. Let's say we want to lose 20 pounds. So the goal is I want to lose 20 pounds. Great. That's great that that's your goal. Let's break this down into a smarter goal. Specific. Is your goal specific? Yes, I want to lose 20 pounds. Is it measurable? How am I going to measure and monitor this goal? Great, I'm gonna use my Renfo scale that was sent to me. Is this realistic? So if, if, if I'm 100 pounds soaking wet and I wanna lose 20 pounds, that is not realistic, right? Is this a realistic? Does my body composition fit within this realm that that is a realistic goal for me? Actionable, this is the most important one. What actions, systems, steps am I going to take to make sure that I can accomplish this goal? So this is mapping out your action. And then the T is time bound. Within what time frame would I like to accomplish this goal? The, to add to the ER, so that's your smart, smarter, exciting. Is this something that fires me up? Does this excite me? Is this something I'm really looking forward to doing? And then the last one is relevant. 
is this relevant to my life right now? Is this something that's relevant to me? Is this important to me? Why is this important to me? So mapping out your goals in a smarter style by actually writing down all of them. So for example, I actually have my, I have my journal right here and I wasn't even going to do this, but I'll just, I'm just going to pull up my goals one sec. Cause I wrote down, cause I want to just kind of even disconnect from, um, perfect. So this was actually one that I wrote. And so to try, so disconnecting from like anything to do with weight loss. So one of the things that me being a parent, I always want to improve and make sure that I'm improving. Um, and you know, anything, to, things to do with parenting, things to do with my kids. So my goal was to improve my parenting knowledge and abilities. My, um, how it is measurable is in the actions and reactions of my children. Um, is this realistic? Absolutely. As a parent and wants, it needs to be realistic to want to improve, you know, your parenting, um, actionable. So for me, my actionable was, I was actually going to read more parenting books or take a parenting course and things to make sure that I'm supporting my kids in the best way possible, especially during times that have been really tough lately. I want to make sure that my kids feel safe and supported. So I want to make sure that I'm doing my part. And is this uh, time bound? Um, so yeah, this was something that I wanted to accomplish this year, right? This year, I want to do some, read some extra mat reading material, so on and so forth. Um, and then this is exciting. And of course, it's relevant as a parent. So what I'm saying is that you can take any goal right? And you want to buy a house and you can break it down into these smarter things. And I have, you know, some of my other goals here, a lot of them are health related, a lot of them are career related, but then you can break it down into a smarter goal. And the most important piece is that, that is actionable. Okay. Number two, do not set any more than five to 10 goals for yourself. So this is mapping out a year. So this is, we're talking about a, a, mapping the year out. Five to 10 goals is per, a great amount. You don't want to overwhelm yourself. You really wanna make sure that you have those smarter steps laid out for each goal. And for all of those, they also need to be realistic and relevant, right? So something that you can actually accomplish. Number three is so important, is writing them down. So 42% more likely to accomplish your goal if you write it down. So you can think it all you want. Don't even type it. Physically, pen to paper, write it down. That's number three. Number four, you need to review them every single day. So review them constantly, have constant reminders, and have visuals. So for me, I usually have my journal beside my bed, and I will refer to it. I'll be completely honest. I actually don't review them every day as much as I should. So um, Again, this is going to be where I need to habit stack and we're going to talk about habit stacking. Reviewing them every day. Um, a lot of people put those little sticky notes on their mirrors or they have vision boards and gold, uh, goal boards or dream boards, might, you might have heard of them called. They're effective. They exist for a reason. Um, so maybe for you, it's building something that's visual. Maybe you build a goal board or a dream board, something that you can just visually look at every day that gets hung up in your office or is just like on the wall in your bathroom every morning where you're getting ready, right? Number five is building habits because good habits anchor you in time of stress. So habits are involuntary. Habits are something that we just eventually, once we've built them, we do them every single day. So forming and building good habits is what is going to anchor you in times of stress. So when we're in times of stress, those good habits can save you. So for example, all of you have gotten into a very good habit of drinking your water. Staying hydrated in times of stress is going to actually support your body in more ways than you realize. So by drinking your water, you are going to, that is just a habit, right? Your nutrition, your food, all of these things that you're working on are going to anchor you. Okay, number six is habit stacking. If you want to integrate a habit, so a lot of you are working really hard at those eight daily rules, right? You're working, you're reading them, you're understanding them, and you're working really hard to find your time frame that works for you. You're remembering to have a bite of protein first, you're drinking your water, you're spacing your meals out, you're doing all of those good things. 
Um, any other positive habits that you want to integrate, habit stacking is highly effective. So for example, I have a lot of clients that struggle with supplements. They're like, yeah, I have those supplements that I ordered and I just, I always forget to take them or I took them the one day and then not the next. So let's say you want to take vitamin D, which I highly recommend just so everybody knows in the winter time, I highly, highly recommend a vitamin D supplement. Oil bound liquid is vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. So it needs a little bit of oil to absorb in the system. So for example, you want to take your vitamin D every day, but you keep forgetting. What is something else you do every single day? Do you wake up every single morning and have a cup of coffee? Great. Then set your vitamin D at the coffee maker. Then you're going to have it every day. Um, let's say you, one of these habits I want to get into, I want to review my goals. Okay. What's something that we do in the evening? You brush your teeth. Perfect. Goals go beside your toothbrush. So while you're brushing your teeth, you're reviewing, reviewing your goals, right? So this is called habit stacking. Anything that's not quite a habit yet, but you want it to be, stack it with something that you do every single day. Highly effective. Number seven is accountability. The fact that those of you who are here tonight shows so much of your dedication to your accountability. So accountability can be really important, especially in times of stress. So if you are accountable, to, so for example, you have all committed yourself to being accountable to checking in with me on Fridays. That is your accountability. And I do believe that for several of you, that is a big motivating factor throughout your week. While you're working on yourselves, you're doing that hard work, you're putting in the self-care and that accountability is checking in with me on Fridays. So any additional support or additional accountability you need to put in place for yourself, make sure that it is there. Without accountability, it is so easy to just mentally say, I am doing whatever I'm doing and nobody's paying attention. So whatever the end results are, it, you know, no one, it's all on me anyway. So it's very easy to detach from your system and detach from your goals without that added accountability. Okay, number eight, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And I'm sure we've heard this before. Again, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. So there's three <laughs> zones when it comes to your systems and setting your goals. There's your comfort zone, your discomfort zone, and your delusional zone. So you really, there's points where when we are within our comfort zone, um, things that make us uncomfortable and things that might just be too far-fetched. Where change is really happening is <laughs> in the discomfort zone. So, and this actually goes with number nine, which is repetition plus resilience equals habits. So in order to form habits, they have to challenge you. So everybody at some point in their um, path, let's say in this particular journey, metabolic balance and what you enter into is a smaller piece of a bigger puzzle of your the lifestyle that you're all trying to accomplish right and on your path and on your journey for many people in the beginning it seems great and it seems fairly easy and you're doing a really good job and you're proud of yourself but there has to be those moments that create that resilience where you have hard times where you do find those struggles and pushing through them and sticking to those habits is what is actually going to make a concrete healthy habit stick so being resilient, repetition and resilience equals habits. So making sure that you are, are committed and sticking, sticking to that. Uh, and then the last one, number 10, is to seek support. So this is, I don't believe that any, you know, people who are out there who are truly successful, I don't know that anyone's fully done it completely on their, on their own. And I'm not saying people aren't really self-motivated and self-guided and that's you know that's great for example I am a registered nutritionist I have worked with nutritionists myself several times I am a certified personal trainer I work with a trainer I um I went to school for business I have a business group degree yet I'm also still seeking out um, business courses and support with, within the business right so I don't think that you can ever stop like seeking additional support and learning from other people. So not to be so kind of small and 
narrow minded to believe that everything is it is capable within ourselves. I do think seeking that additional support and knowledge is power. And I think that everybody that you work with over time is going to give some form of input that is just going to help you to continue to build what resonates with you. That's what I found with me personally is every professional that I've worked with has helped helped kind of build me to where I am and just my thoughts and my beliefs and and I continue to build and I continue to grow off of that so definitely seeking that additional support in order to build your system to therefore accomplish your goals so it was quite a bit of information I tried to break it down into kind of my top 10 what I'm going to do is I'm, I am going to send everybody worksheets for setting those smarter goals. So if I can really encourage you to do anything is to break your goals down and they can be completely not related to anything to do with metabolic balance or your health. They could be related to, you know, your personal goals, your professional goals, things that you want to accomplish in life, things on your bucket list, whatever it might be. But I really do encourage you to, to break it down into a smarter goal. So again, specific, measurable, realistic, actionable, time bound, and then smarter is exciting and relevant and write it down pen to paper and look at it every day. Um, and then of course you can also start working on habit stacking, building those habits. And then um, I do think that a lot of you would probably really enjoy this book as well. All right, I feel like that was a lot of information at once. Does anyone have any questions, input or feedback? I'm gonna drink my water while it's quiet here. You guys are a quiet bunch tonight. No. Oh, I think I think I can hear see your mouth moving. Talking oh, and oh, I, I said that was an excellent presentation. I really uh, like the resilience versus uh, Say that again, what is resilience and- Repetition, repetition and resilience is what is going to build good habits. So it's not yeah. going to come naturally. Repetition, resilience, repetition, resilience every day. Yes. Thanks. Anyone else have anything or anything that maybe you were hoping was covered, was going to be covered and hasn't been covered? No? Anything, anybody have any extra goals or anything they want to talk about? I have a question about exercise. Sure, absolutely, go ahead. I, I can white knuckle it for a while. And then, <laughs> and then um, and I've tried many different programs and I've worked with a personal trainer and I, I know what I enjoy right now. I can't do what I enjoy for medical reasons. Okay. Um, but is there any advice or suggestions on how to make it more enjoyable? I, well, even more of a consistent thing. Like, I mean, I enjoy taking my dog for a walk on the trail. It's not like that. And I enjoy walking outside when it's not, you know, what is that, freezing. <laughs> yes. um, but I'm trying to find something to get passionate about that I can kind of do every day and everything just feels like right. So I'm not sure what you're um, like not able to do right now for medical reasons, it, but I'm wondering if there would be any like even variation of something that you used to enjoy that you might be able to do that that might be more motivating for you. Um, I, alternatively, what I find when it comes to exercise is most people do tend to struggle more so in the beginning. Um, and I do find that it really starts to have those more payoff and those benefits later when you start to genuinely start to feel yourself getting stronger, right? You're like, and you start to notice those physical changes and with exercise is even, it's actually even slower changes in our body. Like when it comes to weight loss, you start to see those results every single week with exercise, it takes a little bit longer. So for you, it's implementing a system to, to get those rewarding results. What I can say to that is I do find a couple of things with exercise. Number one, it has to be a commitment. Um, I usually recommend like scheduling, scheduling it in like a meeting. Um, and I do find it, exercise can disrupt our hormone production if it's too late in the evening. So as best as possible, I do try to recommend to get it in the morning. 
it, not everybody can accommodate. And I understand people's work schedules and life can get a little bit crazy, but the earlier in the day that you can commit to something, um, I can also send you and Rachel, you and I can discuss this separately, but I can also send you some things that you maybe could do in the morning, even just at home. That is just something that you commit to. But again, I would habit stack it. So if you shower and get ready in the morning, no, you're going to do this 20 minute workout before your shower, right? I'm going to, this is before I'm even allowed to hop in the shower. I'm going to just do this 20 minutes. And I think over time, your body starts to respond. And then eventually your body starts to crave it. You're like, ah, I can't wait to crush that little workout before I have a shower and start my day. But I think that's something that you and I could discuss as to what type of exercise is going to be best for you based on what you're saying with medically. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully I'll, I've got an appointment next month and we'll yeah, yeah, out. yeah, exactly. And, but yeah, you and I can chat a little bit more about that, about implementing something. And I know you do enjoy getting outside and going for a walk with the dog, but I think that um, a little more activity in the morning um, and again, habit stacking <clears throat> paired with maybe it's before breakfast or whatever that might look like. Um, and but we can start slow and I have lots of, um, like avenues like online that you can just do from home. Honestly, the whole world is shifting to online. So it's really possible okay. right now to do, you know, there's so many um, options for like online and at home workouts and stuff like that. If, if that's um, what you prefer to do. I have like a, I have like a full gym. I have a Bowflex and free weights and I mean, treadmill and yeah. elliptical. I mean, so many people now, by the time they get in their car and drive to the gym and then get home, that that's their whole workout. That would have been their whole workout. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, so finding things that are at home personally, I've always enjoyed the gym environment and the gym setting. Um, cause I do find sometimes working at home, it is, it is a little bit tougher to build that motivation. Right. So that's where I think you need to have it stack and attach it to something that it's a part of. And also exercise can still be rewarding. If you're literally just do 15 minutes before you, you, that's what you start with. It doesn't mean that you have to commit like, oh my goodness, I got to go sweat it out for an hour, right? Like there's ways that you can start to build up the, that exercise habit. Um, but feeling and seeing those changes from the exercise makes it more motivating and more rewarding to want to continue. So we'll come up with something that works for you. Okay, anyone else? Anyone questions about a goal? Systems, I think. Anyone typing any? Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I hope that it was um, helpful and informative. I hope it gave you some food for thought that you can start kind of mulling over some of your goals. Um, and like I said, your goals are personal to you, right? It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be specifically related to, you know, um, you know, a, a weight loss or, or a health or anything like there's so many variations. And the thing is, is when you encompass all your systems as a whole, everything else starts to benefit in, in your world and in your life as well. So there's lots of things individually that each of you have to look forward to and to be excited about, um, which makes me excited for all of you as well. So I'm going to send over that worksheet so you can start working on your smarter goals, writing them down, being accountable, and start building your systems that work for you. And keep in mind, everyone's systems are, are different, right? I implement tools and packages and things that are helpful, but it's really within you to find a sustainable balance and a system that you can adhere to every single day. And that takes work. You should all be very proud. All right. Unless anyone else has any final comments, I guess we'll just kind of wrap it up. I'll send out those worksheets and I'll come up with a topic for our next meeting. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Ah, thanks for Sounds okay. good. Thank you, Bye. have a great night. Yeah, night guys. Bye guys. Bye.